So we've got some pretty huge things happening for Bitcoin and crypto. As you've seen from the market, we are actually in a bit of a green market today, which is surprising given the news that we spoke about this morning. Things seem to increase or tensions increased between Iran uh, and Israel. But in around 10 hours from filming this video, we have one of the biggest events that everyone has been waiting for, which is happening, which is what guys? The having, oh yeah. Yep, your Bitcoin's cut in half. If you have two, you have one. <laughs> <laughs> That's not quite what's happening. So obviously there's around 900 Bitcoin that was made today, but tomorrow there'll only be around 450 Bitcoin made per day, in turn reducing the supply, making it more illiquid and probably more volatile. Now, we have some good things happening. I want to have a little chat with my friend Tyler Hill here and my other friend Sam from My Financial Friend who can't even take a look in the video he's too busy on his phone but guys i'm researching <laughs> glizzies <laughs> he's researching glizzies before we get on into twitter. Uh, on twitter where it's important before we jump into that i want to let you guys know right now we're doing videos on our phone because we are here in this villa on the palm because we're here for token 2049 and we do want to be say a big thanks to margex they are one of the exchanges that we all personally lose including the glizzy researcher <laughs> we use them pretty much every day to make our trades to look at the market and that sort of stuff so if you do want a massive uh, deposit bonus and a sign up bonus there is a link down there in my description awesome exchange and no kyc whatsoever so depending on where you are watching this video there's no kyc so you can trade from anywhere but but please follow the rules and regulations in your own country. Now, I want each of these guys to give me a reason why they're either bullish or bearish on the current market, but I will give you why I'm bullish on this market right now. And not many people, I don't know if you guys do, but there are uh, tools to track the liquidations in this market. And there is a ton of liquidations for Bitcoin sitting right at around the seventy-one dollars to $72,000 region. Now, we've seen this play in time in and time out where these liquidations act as a magnet, either below or above. So if we get those liquidations, those are short liquidations. And I think there's around two or three, I think it's actually $3 billion worth of liquidations, short liquidations sitting at $72,000. So I think most likely, which all we can do as traders is be on, uh, you know, percentages. I think there's a higher percentage that from here, considering the market is green today, that we go up. This this $72,000 region acts as a magnet. We go up there, we hit the 72 or maybe the 71, and then those shorts start to get liquidated and we have a push upwards. Now, what happens after that? We can't be sure, right? In the long term, I think Bitcoin's going over 100K, but I think that right now people are still very bullish. So that makes me a little bit worried in the short term. So as a trader, I haven't opened any new trades yet, but for short term trading, I do believe that there's a possibility we go up to the 72, maybe three, 74, 75, make all new all time highs. And then again, the market gets wrecked. But this is a normal bull market. We see 20, 30, even up to 54% pullbacks in a bull market. That's what we saw last time. So that's kind of what I'm expecting. My long term bags stay the same. I took profits from some of them in the bull, uh, in the euphoric stage of the market, which I updated in my uh, Patreon, which is linked down there. But I took profits from them. So I'm sitting on a ton of cash right now, ready to buy the dip if it comes. If the dip doesn't come, we find other opportunities in the market. That's how I play it. Now we want to hear from the two men themselves, Tyler. Yep. Bullish or bearish? Bullish. Bullish. Um, there's obviously, I mean, there's no way to know, right, what the next few weeks and the next few months are even going to look like. But the way that I see it is that the having is one of those catalysts. It's it's not even one of those catalysts. It's the catalyst. And you look at history and throughout crypto, and it's not extensive, but throughout its entire history, it's been the catalyst over a long period of time that not only just injects liquidity, but it injects excitement, and not only excitement, but volatility as well. And so knowing how the liquidity cycles go my whole thought process here is that although bitcoin is the major player in my own portfolio and that's where the majority of my money goes or has gone for a while i'm more looking now towards the altcoin market right because the way that i've always paid attention to it is that in the moments in which we see liquidity injected into bitcoin it is naturally going to funnel and cycle into your altcoins and then trickle down all the way into the bullshit pre-sales meme coins whatever it may be and so knowing that you know it 
I think that trying to play the Bitcoin game right now with the amount of volatility that's going to come with the catalyst like this isn't the right play. I think the easiest play here is to start looking at some of those stronger, more creditable altcoins, because although they may go into a couple of days, a couple of weeks, maybe even a couple of months of not doing much, they will inevitably receive some of the liquidity that's going to enter into the market from Bitcoin. And that's going to be a little bit more of a high percentage, easier to win type of play for me. And so that's kind of where I'm focused. So micro you know i really don't know i don't know if i'm bullish or bearish honestly but macro i'm very clearly bullish and i think the majority of my attention now is now switching to altcoins now that the catalyst is here i don't like to chase catalysts especially for the the asset that the catalyst is built around so that's kind of where i'm at uh sam what you thinking well uh, uh, uh tyler yeah <laughs> give us some names some names give us some mm. altcoins my man come on so <laughs> The easiest play, so I always like to have a, uh, a bit of an anchor, right? Like the stable play of whatever I'm doing. And so obviously I'm going to just go with Ethereum there, the most boring altcoin you can possibly imagine. But I like to have an anchor because again, things might get ugly. We might see a really ugly summer. Things might not do well. And I obviously want to be putting money into a place that's going to be winning on a dominance perspective. So I think Ethereum does well. Obviously, I'm a Solana fanboy, Solana standboy. You got And it. Salama. Sal yeah. Salama. Yeah, Salama. Like him, Solana. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> like Solana. Solana's on a, a great price right it now. Is. If you, like, this is the thing. This is another thing. Like, if you believe that Solana deserves the price of above two hundred dollars, six hundred, brother. You, you, yeah, six hundred dollars. That yeah. uh, uh, officially, right here. That's my official. price prediction. Six hundred dollars. Easy money. If you believe that's going to happen, sure, Solana had some teething problems. Sure, it went down. But is this not the perfect? Yep. Were you not waiting at two twenty, two thirty? Were you not like, I wish I could get it again at one hundred and fifty? Now everyone hates Solana in this moment. Everyone hated Solana when it was at $20, where I bought it. Guess what happened after I bought it? It went down to $17. I felt like I was a bit stupid. I was a bit an idiot. Now it's at $150. Yeah. Perfect. So again, we have an opportunity. Solana may drop from $150 to $100. Yeah. It might lose $100. But again, as me and Sam were talking about yesterday, and I think maybe Tyler, it doesn't really matter. No. Bitcoin now, Bitcoin yesterday, we were talking about buying it, $60,000. Today it's at $64,000. But am I going to look back when Bitcoin's at $150? 50k maybe that's literally tomorrow maybe that's in a month maybe it's in a year maybe it's in 10 years whatever am i really gonna look back and go god instead of buying today at 64 dollars i wish i bought it at 60 no. no, i don't care no. but with that said buy solana now according to tyler no, <laughs> no i'm joking do it do it do, do it. it do it it's financial advice do it <laughs> it's not financial advice <laughs> yeah uh, i'm bullish as well now i'm still 70 75 percent bitcoin of my crypto portfolio uh, for a variety of reasons, but I think typically we see the most bullish time in the four year cycle is six months before the halving to 18 months after. Consistently, you can outperform just buying and holding if you buy six months before the halving and sell 18 months after. We're right in that sweet spot. Usually, every cycle we've seen Bitcoin go up between 800% and eh, basically infinite. Uh, percentages after the halving. Last cycle it was 800%, so I did a 9x after the halving. Maybe we get 200%, 300%, that's still $150,000 Bitcoin, so I'm quite bullish. And one thing that I think a lot of people don't realize is there's like a bomb that's going to go off at some point, uh, in a good way, I guess. I, I don't know if that's the right way to say it. Can I say that in Dubai? I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, but I'm saying there's there's going to be a moment where BlackRock does end up buying Bitcoin in their other portfolios. They have two portfolios that they've talked about that they're going to add Bitcoin to, and they have $50 billion in AUM. They at any time can say, we're going to buy today, and they can just go buy BlackRock's ETF uh, and buy 5%, 3%, 1%. They'll probably buy over a, a long time span. But they can put in $5 billion, $10 billion just like that without any client consent. So it's not like they actually have to have inflows into the IBIT uh, ETF from people that want to buy Bitcoin. It can be someone that wants a strategic income opportunities fund or a global allocation fund. And then they just cycle over into Bitcoin. So that's going to happen at some point. That's going to happen with a lot of uh, retirement accounts. But that takes time. Um, that happens with a lot of ETFs in the future, too, where they're just going to be buying IBIT. So eventually we're going to have that switch turn on then everyone's going to get super bullish again there's going to be billions of dollars of inflows into the etfs and that's really what we haven't seen recently like the prices just stayed sideways because we have days of outflows days of inflows they're kind of weak uh, there's just not much volatility uh, so i think once that happens everyone will be on the bandwagon again we're going to 100 we're going to 250 300 
and yeah, you're gonna be happy that you probably bought in the low 60s when no one really cared. I mean, we can see it right now uh, based on our videos, like how they're performing in terms of views. They're not that good. The last week, people aren't really paying attention. Even though we have the Bitcoin halving coming up, people are searching Bitcoin halving, but they don't really care about uh, any kind of crypto videos because the price just isn't doing anything. But that changes at some point, and then everyone feels FOMO, they buy back in. I mean, Solana went down 40%, now it's up another, what, 15% from where it was just a few days ago. Luckily, I did I did put a long in, even mm. before, even before. Was it, it on Marjex? It was on Blowfin, mm. but I do use both. I use both. So, I'm, yeah, I'm just gonna be honest. I use both because I think it's important to have multiple exchanges as well. Just to be very clear, I use multiple exchanges because sometimes they go down, like we've seen Coinbase and Binance go down. So uh, I showed that on my channel earlier. We had HG Algo flip to uh, flip a buy signal for the first time on a daily in six months. And I bought, I think the day before that, because I seen that uh, Solana went down 40%. It was hitting a previous resistance as support. So I figured, okay, we can kind of cycle. Well, usually I'd wait to see it confirm, but I just went for it and I like yeah, it, it, did, yeah. it did well. I mean, it's that's one of, now. It's one of the keys of using leverage if you do it safely. You can yeah. take those sorts of bets. And how much did I put into it? $150. Exactly. Yeah, I didn't put so in you can thousands lose it, yeah. and thousands of dollars. And you can lose $150. You can use as much leverage as you want, depending on how bullish you are. And yes, you might get liquidated, but it's not a crazy amount. Now, before we finish this video, I want to ask you guys one question, because I think we don't agree on certain things. Definitely me and Sam were different about a month ago when we last spoke uh, on, on a chat like this, but not in person. I think that Bitcoin can still pull back a significant amount, yeah? So I think Bitcoin could, could still go down 50% like we saw in the last bull market. So from 70, from 70,000 uh, down to 35,000, uh, I think it's possible. Okay, nice big move from here, but what do you guys, what do you think, Tyler? It's possible. I think it's incredibly unlikely. Yeah. Um, but we'll see. The reason that I say it's unlikely is because I think that the little, the lizard people that control these markets just wouldn't want that to happen and they'll go out of their way to, to stop and it. Bla BlackRock would look very bad if they but, did that. But, how good would they look if the market did do that? Then they started to buy back in and all those people that came in and started buying the ETFs were immediately yeah. starting to shoot up a lot. So my, my mindset has changed a bit. I do think it's a little bit unlikely, but I do genuinely think that it is a possibility. But at the end of the day, my opinion is I don't care. I yeah. honestly couldn't. If Bitcoin could honestly go to 20K and I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't what would you do if I it happened? Lose sweat. I'd probably just sell everything, <laughs> you know? Not jokes. <laughs> I'd just buy. I'd buy like I'm buying now. Yeah, I don't care yeah. what happens. I'm still buying because it's going to go up over time. Yeah, Simple as. Fair enough. And Sam, what do you reckon? Yeah, I mean, we can fall down. You can't zoom in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to zoom in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can always fall down. I'm never going to say that we can't. Do I think it's likely we fall down 50% from here? No. Um, could I see 55K? Because there's a lot of people thinking we're going to be stuck at 59K uh, and we're not going to go further. Just wipe out everyone that's going to get liquidated at 58. Yeah, I could see that happening. Maybe flash down to 50, right? Something like that. I don't think that's likely to happen. I'm not making any bets on that happening. I'm not going to short the market or anything like that. Uh, I think it's more likely we go up. But in the end, I don't really care because... 99% of my portfolio is in like just buy and hold strategies. I play around with one to 2% in leverage and some high risk stuff. I have been adding to, I guess, some other altcoins as well when opportunities come up, but the majority of my portfolio is Bitcoin. Uh, and that makes me feel a little bit better about uh, volatility as well. Cause my Bitcoin might go down 50%, but altcoins will go down 80, 90% yeah, yeah. in that scenario. And so, of course, we all have different strategies. I'm very risk on. Sam's a little bit more risk off. I think he's kind of in the middle. In the middle yeah. And that's the best thing. Like, none of us can give you any more. We don't give you any advice, obviously, financial advice. Unless but, it's buying Solana, of course. Of course, apart yeah. from that. <laughs> but, this is, like, we're all really close friends, all in the same space. We do basically the same thing. We run companies together, and we still have different investment styles. So remember that even though we're talking here, you each have to have your own investment styles, and you will learn over time. I'm sure if you've been in the market for five years, six years, you'll know what I'm talking about. But over time, if this is your first first bull run, you'll learn over time what works for you personally and being unemotional in this market is the key to literally, that's the key, right? <laughs> no matter whether or not you're super bullish, super bearish, if I'm super bullish but I'm emotional about it, I'll put too much money. Yep. If I'm super bearish and emotional about it, I'll sell too much. So with that said, thank you guys for watching it all the way to the end of the video. Tyler, give them like a word to say in the description if they've made it this far. Solana on top. Solana on Easy top. Money. Having. <laughs> Solana on top and 
halving. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Peace, boys and girls. And